Okay. I, he told me that I'm not leaving. And instead of asking to go to the bathroom, I just said, okay, that's fine. So he says, you and I could uh, do a project. A project? This is perfect. He reached out to touch my hair, but he moved so gently that I didn't flinch away. I looked at him questioningly, and he bent to grab a large metal bucket. What do you mean? He placed the bucket in front of my legs with a soft clank. I looked down into the empty bucket, dread tightening in my gut. I know this isn't fair. Life isn't fair. It seemed almost as if he was stalling, even though I was the one taped to a chair. I can tell by your face. You're gentle. And the world's like a loaded gun. Normally, I don't care. But you're different. Not like the other girls. <laughs> I wish I could tell you that it's going to be okay. My attention was caught by the glint of a knife in his hand. But it isn't. I wanted to cry out in fear, but that same dread choked me up as he moved the knife. So, is this the bloodletting part? The pain I was expecting never came. I looked down. He tore off the cut tape from around my arms. I looked back up at him. Are you letting me go? No. I need to, um... I need to get your blood out. Okay, so now he's doing the bloodletting. We'll drink the tea this time. There's no point in suffering needlessly, I guess. He grabbed a water bottle from near his plants. Uh, it's not hot or anything. Here. He held the bottle out to me. It looked like any plain water bottle a jogger would have. Happy to finally have the use of my hands back, I took it and held it to my mouth. It tasted bitter and strange. Uh, not so much. He took the bottle from me firmly. Just a little should be enough. You could have told me that before you handed me the bottle. I considered answering him, but I was distracted by my fingers beginning to tingle. I had trouble focusing for a moment. I couldn't get my head to feel right. Oh. The feeling spread incredibly quickly. Like falling into a pit full of those cold glass beads people put on the bottom of a fish tank. My whole body was numb. There. It... It'll be easier now. He held the knife he cut my tape with, turning it over a bit. I was watching the blade when he gripped my wrist tightly. He licked his lips absentmindedly as he gently moved his thumb over my wrist. He was feeling me and concentrating. Gross. Then suddenly, he stopped and lowered the knife to my skin. Uh... I mean, the least amount of bodily harm would be this one. I guess. I froze. He pressed the knife through my skin. I could only feel the same tingling sensation and the light pressure of the knife. It sank deeper into my wrist and I knew it should be hurting, but I just watched, transfixed. He was breathing slowly and evenly as he carefully pulled the blade along my largest vein. I watched my blood well up, flow around my wrist, and drip quietly into the bucket below. We both watched the dark liquid seep out of me. He seemed to be relaxed by it. I felt somewhat detached. It was surreal. Was this really happening? The flow began to slow as I breathed more rapidly. He felt my cold hand, then moved to take my other arm. He positioned the knife over my undamaged wrist. I mean, I guess. I closed my eyes and breathed. Are you ready? No! I nodded slowly, soothed by his gentle voice. Mm, or you're half delirious from blood loss. <laughs> Same thing. He dipped the still wet blade into my other wrist, finding my vein easily. I'm gonna die. Somehow the sensation and the vision of my life's blood pouring out of me didn't seem to bother me anymore. I looked up lazily and saw him over me, mumbling barely audible encouragements. It's easy. Easy. The dripping. I breathed faster and faster. Cold. Blurring. Was... Was he talking to me? So lovely. 
canvas is burning. Fuck off. I let out a soft sound as my head slumped. Yeah, fuck. I could still hear the dripping, but it got quieter as he bent to whisper right next to my ear. I've seen the river. It's beautiful. Like the river sticks? You're dying! What? Where am I? I spun around, but it all looked the same. Hello? Nothing. Total silence. I realized I didn't feel any pain anymore either. Just the gentle pull of the shallow water around my calves. I remembered him saying something about a river. I looked down at the gray water, but there wasn't any shore or edge. It seemed to go on forever. Let's, let's wander around. I picked a direction and walked. The scenery never changed. There was no silhouette of any horizon, just the pull of the river. Let's keep going. I picked a direction and walked. The scenery never changed. Oh, okay. So let's just have a little lie down, I guess. I looked at the water and laid down in it. I floated easily. My body was carried with the current in a direction I could feel but not see. Why was I here again? I don't remember where I was before this. It doesn't matter. This feels nice. I mean, I fucking guess. <laughs> it is beautiful. If you like gray. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guess I'm gonna try that path again, but this time I am gonna go to the bathroom and take that thingy that, um... Well, first I need to go back to the bar and see if I can get him to just, like, take me without having to club me over the head. Um, I think it's like drinking his drink. And then I'll go into the bathroom and take the health thing and see if I can survive the bloodletting. Okay. Feeling a lot better. So now let's go back out and see if we can survive the bloodletting. What? head fell down to my chest. It felt like my stomach was trying to turn inside out. My head. My head. What's wrong? I don't know, man. I thought I did everything right. Oh, God. Yeah, my sentiments. <laughs> Stop. You seem uncomfortable. Uncomfortable is, is the understatement of the year. I can't. I can't. There's fucking orchids everywhere. Stop. Just pick one. Yes. You look like you've seen something awful. Are you fucking with me? Is he fucking with me right now? Is this him trying to be funny and fuck with me? That's... What a dick. <sighs> Too many drugs. Okay. I 
only took the one though. Okay, so maybe if I try again, just do the hand washing and not take any pills, then see if I survive the bloodletting? That was fucking freaky as shit, and I'm gonna be super honest with you, I'm fucking here for it. That was cool as hell. <laughs> I loved that. <laughs> so just wash hands. And then leave, because I feel like our health is pretty good. Okay, so he's leaving. Yep, I remember this. Might as well just chill the fuck out. Ow. Okay, so maybe you just don't survive the bloodletting. <laughs> okay, so I was told by a couple people that I should name myself after a flower to get um, more affection. So let's try that. Uh, I will be Rose for this evening. Oh, that's a really nice name. Thanks. A chance, another chance. How many ch Okay, I asked him to give me a chance instead of doing the plant thing. And he's like, oh, pissy. He suddenly looked at me with disgust. Another chance? How many chances? I literally have not been given a single chance. Like, you knocked my ass out in an alley and dragged me into your home. I don't know you. <laughs> he seemed to be getting more agitated. I've tried a hundred times, a thousand maybe. He was breathing harder. It's always fine at first. And, and then I say, or I do something, Lawrence, just, and everything is hell again. It won't be long now. He let out an awkward, angry-sounding laugh. I'm not like them, Lawrence. He immediately stopped laughing. I told you, I'm not like the other girls. I'm a cool girl. <laughs> he slammed his hands down on my legs. Prove it. If I'm going for honesty, I don't know what you want me to do, but I, f I feel like either answer is gonna lead to me getting my ass kicked. So, just say it, I'll prove it. He stared hard at me and tightened his hands around my legs. Whatever I, he just kept staring. You're hurting me. He released my thighs and stood up abruptly. Ugh, Lawrence? I don't know what I want. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I don't like that. Something about him seemed different. Something about the whole room seemed different. He stopped and looked right at me. I must have been recoiling. Right, right, you're scared, aren't you? I felt a chill. He was looking at me in a way that made me feel tied up like an animal. You read my mind? He came closer to me, over me. You don't want to die, do you? I shivered as he touched my face and shook my head quickly. But everything dies. I know you haven't seen the river. I have, actually. It's all right. I've seen it, and I'm still scared. Scared, just like you. All the time. I squirmed uselessly. You have every right to be terrified. There are monsters in the dark. Fog, that is creepy. Ooh, it's making my skin crawl. Oh no. Every day I dream about dying. So every night I stay awake. I see more in the dark. And there's so much.
much to be afraid of. He touched my neck, caressing me softly. It should have been a reassuring gesture, but it wasn't. You're sweet and bright. I guess I picked you before you were supposed to fall. I suppose that's the way life is. He ran his fingers over my neck more firmly. I couldn't move away from him. You're still full of warm flesh and blood. Ew, okay. But what's underneath? Still just flesh and blood. Skeleton? Please stop. I was going to kill you nicely. The right way. Is there a right way to kill someone? Like how hunters kill rabbits or farmers kill chickens. Are you gonna eat me? Or are you just gonna kill me and throw my body into the woods? But I'm not a hunter, and there's nothing anyone can do to stop me. I don't want to kill you like that. I want to peel away your layers and unwind your strings. Jesus. I choked on a sob. I'll pull every part of you and spread you out. I'll watch your blood and feel the warmth spill out of you. You'll be a perfect, beautiful mess. Broken, ruined, dead, and all mine. Fucking shit, dude. My protest was cut off by Lawrence shoving a cloth into my mouth and taping it down. I tried to scream as he leaned back, looking me over appreciatively. Don't worry, you don't have to do a thing. You won't even have to breathe for much longer. Oh, goody. He turned the chair I was bound to. I was shaking and sweating. He retrieved a small knife. Oh, to really see the beauty in the world, you have to have some patience. Like this bitch thinks he's gonna be able to precision peel my skin away from my bones and unwind my tendons and all that shit and he can't even fucking button his shirt right? Come on. I couldn't shriek or cry. I kept shaking as he made a slow, small cut. I stared in horror as he continued. More tiny cuts. I strained, sobbed, and drooled into the rag stuffed into my mouth. He meticulously carved lines in my flesh, peeling away strips of skin. I learned the true depth of misery. It felt like an eternity as I tried to beg him to just kill me. But I couldn't speak through the gag, and I'm sure he wouldn't have listened. I could do nothing but wait in unyielding agony as he peeled me apart. My head dropped lower, but I could still hear him. Like a little potato! He breathed evenly, calmly. He was even humming softly. I didn't have the strength to scream or even flinch. And finally, blissfully, I ran out of enough blood to stay conscious. Cool. Ugh. This guy's a dick. Okay, normally at this point I've just been resting. But this is the second night, so I'm wondering if I can maybe get out this time? Because the first time I could not get out and he got very angry and cut my arms off. So <laughs> let's see if we can get something different. <gasps> something budged. I pulled carefully. It was the arms of the chair. They're loose. I kept pulling. The one on the left creaked and I froze. Get out of here. I can do this. I just need to be really careful and not grunt. <laughs> I moved my left arm, twisting upward. I could feel the arm of the chair getting looser. Oh, fuck. Shit. I gulped. The blood was pulsing in my ears. get out of this bitch. I was shaking. I have to... I gently pulled up on the left arm one more time. I heard a quiet pop. My arm was free. I quickly used it to begin freeing my other arm. Taking my time, I was able to pull up the other arm of the chair. With two free arms, it was easy to lean forward and grasp the small knife he'd left on the table in front of me. I slowly and quietly cut the tape from my limbs. Time to stand. 
I got up slowly. I was dizzy and sore. If it gives me the chance to stab this bitch in the throat, you better goddamn believe I'm gonna do it. <laughs> and my captor is still asleep. God damn it. <laughs> okay, well, let's find a better weapon. See if we can get him. I glanced over the tables in the room. There was plenty of dangerous things here. My gaze settled on his large pair of garden shears. A grin crept over my face. The ones he decapitated us with. Aw, how fitting. It'll be easy. I crept closer to him. Oh, cut his head off. My heart was hammering in my chest. Do it. I approached him silently and slowly. My hands and breath became steady. I listened hard to hear his soft breathing. I smiled. No more hesitation. No surrender. No man left behind. I grasped his shoulder, pulling him down flat. In the same perfect motion, I slammed the blades down into his stomach with all the force I could muster. I heard the soft sound of the blades slicing into his flesh and organs. Ha, you stupid bitch. I was surprised at how easily the shears went into him. He looked like he was trying to make a sound. Now who's soft, bitch? It's not me. Shh, it's okay. I twisted the blade slightly, earning a pained gasp. Remember, you said we had to be quiet. <laughs> yes! I watched his blood seep from his wound. He was shaking. I leaned down close. I wanted to watch this. Oh, that's fucked. He moved his mouth again, trying in vain to say something. But he only managed a cracked sob. I locked eyes with him. And I wrenched the shears deeper. I panted over his body. That felt pretty good. Oh, that's not good. Well, enjoy the river, bitch. Best ending. 10 out of 10. Love that ending. Let's not play any more endings, because that one was the best one. <laughs> okay, so I wonder what happens. So if we find a better weapon, we just stab that bitch and, like, love that. So I guess let's try to leave the apartment. Now's my chance. I'm getting the fuck out of here. I have a feeling we're not going to get the fuck out of here. I tiptoed towards the door. Okay. I looked over. Jesus! Why are there so many locks? Honestly, though. He had the usual apartment sliding chain, another larger one of the same style that looked like he had screwed it on himself, a swivel lock, one I didn't even recognize. My brow furrowed at the padlocks. This is such a fire hazard. Luckily, a quick look at the nearby plants revealed the keys. I chewed my lip and set to work on them, trying to be completely silent. I managed to move the chains with barely any sound the hell is this guy so afraid of? I gently opened the padlocks. The guy can punch like a hammer and he's clearly crazy. I scowled as I fiddled with one of the swivel locks. It's like he was afraid of the fucking boogeyman. Oh god, who's gonna be on the other side of this door? I spun around checking on Lawrence. He didn't move. I let myself breathe again. Just this last lock. Son of a bitch. My face was slammed into the door from behind. Uh-oh. I was so close! His usual detached look was gone. He was fully focused. I froze in fear, doing nothing as he lunged for me. My head spun as I was thrown to the ground. I groaned in pain, but it was cut off by a heavy slam on my back. The breath was knocked out of me. I curled defensively, trying to catch my breath. Please. He kicked me sharply in the gut. I couldn't move. I curled further, crying and trying to gasp. Then he was on top of me, twisting me and pressing my front to the floor. He grabbed the blade I dropped. Lawrence. Even my voice sounded broken. I choked out another gasp as he grabbed a fistful of my hair and yanked my head backwards. I whimpered. My whole chest was off the floor. He 
he pulled my head back so hard that my spine arched painfully. Then I felt the cold metal pressed against my throat. Uh-oh. I felt the warm liquid pour down my chest before I felt the pain. Okay, I guess let's go back and do the icky one. Okay, let's see how well this turns out for us. I'm gonna assume not good. I knew I should probably leave or something, but I looked at him in the bed. He really doesn't look scary like that. The bed is small, but it looks comfortable. I rubbed my aching arms. Something was telling me this is a bad idea. Yes, <laughs> yes it is. But where have all my good ideas gotten me anyways? I don't feel like that's a fair comparison. <laughs> I don't, I don't like that. I don't. <laughs> I gently pulled up the blanket and crawled in next to him. As I nestled in next to him in his warmth, he began to move. Ooh, hello. He jumped back from me a little. It's just me. He looked at me in disbelief. You're... He started turning red. <laughs> Get out of here. What are you doing? What are you doing? God damn it. Okay, well, let's go with the less icky one first. And then we'll double back, I guess. What? Uh, I guess so. Oh, we got a red heart. He seemed pretty anxious about me. I closed my eyes and nestled in against him. I could feel his breathing get calmer and hear his heartbeat. After a few moments of silence, I felt him gently move his arm around me. He hugged me close and relaxed. I don't know when I fell asleep, but I slept well for the first time since meeting him. The standards for that are so low. You have been taped to a chair. <laughs> This entire time, of course, laying down in a bed is going to be better than being taped in a chair. Get better standards, you guys. Get, get, get better standards. I woke up with a start. Am I taped to the chair again? Deja vu. I looked down. Why was I in the chair again? God damn it. When did he move me? I thought I had the red heart. Did last night even happen? My head felt so fuzzy. I, I don't know what to do. There's something about you. Something I can't. Was he shaking? Everyone I've met wished they'd just die faster. But you, I mean, have you ever heard of soulmates? I think the whole principle of soulmates is that it's one person for one person. And, uh, your girl's been around the block a couple of times. <laughs> like, uh, sir, I, I am soulmates with everyone you know personally. <laughs> I wasn't sure if he wanted a reply. He continued before I had much time to think about it. The idea that there's someone out there meant for you. It's comforting, isn't it? Someone who'd love you no matter what? I think it's a beautiful fantasy. But fantasies aren't real. You know it doesn't work like that, don't you? People are temporary. Just threads passing each other. Like I literally escaped from my chair and then just like snuggled him in bed. And he's still just like not good enough for me. You need to perform sexual acts to prove your, your usefulness. Because he's a man. There's no force in this world that will hold you close to me. Now that I've met you, I know I need you. And I have to hold you close myself. Do you understand? No. I squirmed in the chair. Wait, are you going to kill me or not? Something was wrong. 
He took something from the table. Oh, he's gonna kill me. Just one last drink. He's absolutely gonna kill me. Okay. Lawrence. He pressed the cup to my lips and forced the liquid down my throat before I could voice any more protests. The foul taste brought tears to my eyes as I sputtered and coughed. Please. It's okay. It's not. I'll take care of you, I guess. Wrong. Wrong. Something's... I can't feel my... No, I can feel. It's coming back. The dull ache advanced on me like a train. It slammed through me as searing agony flared all over my body. What did he do to me? Jeez. I opened my eyes, but I couldn't scream. Oh no, don't move. He stopped to brush my sweat-slicked hair from my face. I'm not done yet. My legs. My arms. Calm down, okay? Fuck off. More bitter liquid was poured in my mouth. Stop. Something that I just don't understand. Like, I am... Like, it's like with Sano. I am perfectly willing to stay here and live this fucked up fantasy life with you. You don't have to cut my legs off. You don't have to put a parasitic centipede in my brain that controls my mind. I'm good. Like, I've got this. You don't gotta do this shit. There you are. He pet me softly. My arms and legs. I couldn't think. I laid in a haze of drugs and faraway pain. It's all right. It's all okay. He kept petting me. Not a dog. I fixed our problem. Blood. Now nothing can take you from me. My arms and legs. And I'll take care of you. They're gone. Yeah forever. I could have, I could have kept my limbs. Honestly, I could have, I could have kept the limbs. Okay, so I'm gonna try this one and see if I can keep my limbs. He stared hard at me. He looked like he was trying to decipher some foreign language. He, I pressed my body against his to demonstrate and gasped in surprise and, oh, yep, there it is. Uh-oh. He looks very angry. He was breathing hard, pinning me tightly under him. I didn't know what to say. I'm not going to let you go. What? You're going to die here. I know the words should have bothered me more, or bothered you at all, but something about his tone sounded like, he was trying to convince himself rather than me. So it doesn't matter what we do now. <sighs> for once, for once, if my character could think with her head and not her dick, that'd be great. It would just be great. <laughs> he seemed surprised. That must have been it. He narrowed his eyes, making up his mind. I gasped again as he grabbed my clothing he quickly pulled away just enough to expose me. I've never done that with someone who's still... If he means alive, I am going to lose my shit. I looked at him questioningly as he cut off his own sentence. Someone... Anyone. Fuck you. Fuck you. That's not what you meant. That's not what you meant, you disgusting little creep. I waited for him to continue, but he abruptly turned from me. He seemed frustrated with himself. I waited a few moments, then put an arm around him. No wonder he commented about how warm I was. He's not used to... I held him closer, and I felt his breathing relax. I don't know when I fell asleep. But I slept well for the, yep. Okay, so let's see if he cuts my arms and legs off. Since we slept with him. Oh. 
He does. Either way, no arms or legs. Okay, so last time I just kind of let him cut like a dingus and uh, died. So, so I've grabbed the knife already. That did not turn out well for us. I let him cut. That also did not turn out well for us. So maybe if I'm like, stomp. Maybe he'll be like, oh shit, dude, my bad. Sure, I'll do that, absolutely. It's the least I could do. I jerked my wrist away from him. Stop. Don't. He tightened his grip painfully and spoke in a quiet tone, dripping with threat. Don't fight me, Cece. Your path? I'm guiding it now. Do you understand? I looked back at him, unable to find my words. I was shocked at his sudden change in demeanor. He lowered the knife back to my skin. Well? Fuck you. I screamed as loud as I could. Maybe someone would hear me before... His hand clamped over my throat with so much force that the chair almost tipped backwards. For a moment, we were both still and silent. I heard a muted thumping from above accompanied by the muffled voice of an older man upstairs. Shut the fuck up. Lawrence's hand was still on my neck. Sorry, Mr. Davidson. It won't happen again. His grip tightened. I was beginning to see spots. Will it? I mean, I guess not because you're gonna fucking kill me. I tried to shake my head even though I could barely move it. With one last warning squeeze, he let go of me. I wheezed and coughed, trying to suck in air quickly. I couldn't think. My vision wavered for a moment. Keeping you here isn't working. I gulped, watching him. He seemed to be thinking hard. Would you like to leave this place? I wanted to answer, but I couldn't think. Just, yes please. But don't send me to the goddamn river. I couldn't. I tried to move. Opening my eyes was a mistake. Everything's moving. I thought I recognized the rumble of a car's engine. Uh-oh. But I couldn't focus. Am I going into the swamp? I woke up from the feeling of something cold hitting me. Uh-oh. I was laying somewhere cold. My head hurts. Something hit me again, or fell on me. I tried to open my eyes more, clear my head. Dirt. Oh shit, is he burying me? I'm outside. Oh no. He sure is. Oh god, he's burying me. I began to panic, trying to move my muscles. I could barely move. My head. I strained, fear for my life driving me to move my limbs slightly. I grunted from the massive effort it took just to move my arm. I froze in fear. Are you awake? I mean... I closed my eyes and laid still. Maybe he won't... Fuck. <laughs> just try to play pause and like... My eyes shot open as the wind was knocked out of me. He jumped down in the hole on top of me. I coughed and tried to plead for my life. But he stomped on my chest before I could get anything meaningful out. You're an endless fountain of problems. Thank you. You should get that on a t-shirt. Just endless fountain of problems. He lifted the shovel and brought it down on my neck. Well, at least we didn't suffocate to death in the ground. Okay, so we had gotten into bed when his affection was pretty high. Although I don't know if it's the highest you can get it because Vincent, his had like the clouds, like it was the moon and his doesn't have anything special on it. So I'm like, maybe if we get into bed when his affection isn't as high, um, I'm assuming it'll be death, 
but maybe it'll like unlock a way for me to like continue trying to build that affection without him wanting to murder me. <laughs> okay, he looked at me in disbelief. You're, he blinked a few times. Then something changed on his face from surprise to anger. Ah, poop. He quickly rolled over me and wrapped his hands around my neck. Uh, I was too weak and tired to fight him at all. His weight on me and the tight grip on my throat were such a strange contrast to the warm and soft bed sheets. Maybe I just didn't want to fight him anymore. Okay, that ended about how I expected. I asked him if I could use the restroom. He said no. I don't think so. What? Don't worry. I'm not going to keep you much longer. Oh, fuck. I, oh, no, he's going to drain me. He didn't even let me go potty. I can salvage this. I can salvage this. My health is all the way up. All the way up. I can salvage this. Maybe I can just... Let him... Let him do it until... Oh, nope. I died. Hmm. Okay, so we're in this situation. Uh, last time I refused to drop the knife and got my head chopped off, so I guess this time we'll just kind of... I guess we'll drop it. Oh no, we already did that. Okay, so I tried to take the knife away from him. He pulled out his gardening shears and was like, drop my goddamn knife. And so I did. And then I pulled away before he started trying to cut me. I pulled my arm away from him weakly. Lawrence, I begged. I'm scared. You don't want to die? Of course not. He looked at me coldly. You'd rather cling to that temporary state. He leaned forward, brandishing the knife. Warm and noisy. Colors, sunlight, sweet scents, sensations. You want more, don't you? I feel like all of these choices are like the same. <laughs> we'll just go with the first one. I shrieked as he slammed the blade down through my good arm. Fuck. He covered my mouth to muffle my crying. Fine. Enjoy. I need to leave for a bit. My bleeding arms were shaking as I choked back more sobs. You're just gonna leave me? Like this? He looked over my bloody limbs. I guess I can't. I breathed half a sigh of relief before realizing that he only grabbed the duct tape. Ah, he's gonna cover my mouth with it. Fuck. He slapped a piece over my mouth and roughly taped my arms back to the chair. I could only manage a pathetic, exhausted whimper as he left my view. I barely heard the door behind me slam before I passed out. I honestly thought we would have been dead at this point. Uh oh. Maybe it's here. Maybe I spoke just a smidge too soon. I began to grow more concerned. He always seemed kind of bitter, but he really looked fed up now. He turned away from me without a word. He returned with a small plastic cup full of liquid. He shoved it in front of my face. Drink it. I'm good. I pursed my lips tight and glared at him. He tried to smile at me. It'll make you feel better. He wasn't very good at faking it. Nah. Nothing he could say would make me drink that shit. I kept my mouth shut. I saw him twitch. He looked at the cup, and to my surprise, he took a large swig. With his mouth full, he snapped his hand out to grab my nose. He was rough. I cried out. Then, before I could silence myself, his lips were covering my own. I felt the strange-tasting liquid gush into my mouth as I began to panic. Why couldn't he just tip the cup? What? He pulled away and snapped my jaw shut with his hand. I struggled and sputtered as he looked on coldly, absently licking some of the drug from his lips. I coughed after I felt most of the substance go down my throat. 
damn it. Like, I feel like that was so unnecessary. Just, like, take the cup. Poor, no, he's just gonna... He couldn't resist. <laughs> he watched me intently, leaning back against the table and fondling the empty cup. I was wondering what he was waiting for just as my fingers began to tingle. Lawrence, what is... I tensed up as the tingling began to spread all over my arms and legs. It became more intense and then painful. Is that the pain, the pain liquid f from his bathroom? It's not very nice, is it? I lurched and strained against the tape in the chair as I felt like my veins were on fire. My muscles were tensing and cramping painfully. I wanted to scream, but my tensed jaw wouldn't open. We're just passing threads. But I don't like you. And now I have the power to weave your thread wherever I want. What a child. I rolled my eyes up to see him, now aware that my eyes had filled with tears. I'm going to twist you around. When did he pick up shears? He looked at the large blades, boredly. I'm going to make you hurt. This must be a nightmare. He leaned over my convulsing body and wrenched my jaw open. I gurgled in horror as he grasped my tongue and pushed the shears in my mouth. Despite my entire body being in agony, I could still feel him cut through my tongue. My mouth was instantly flooded with my own warm metallic blood. I couldn't move or scream. I couldn't even cough. All of my muscles were locked up. I was only vaguely aware of him swaying and leaning back against the table watching me. Blood was pouring down my airway and there was nothing I could do about it. He just kept watching me silently as I drowned in agony in front of him. I feel like he's so fickle. Like, this ending with him where he like would keep you, I feel like would just be the hardest to maintain. Purely because you do one thing that he doesn't like, and you're fucking toast, dude. Like, you climb into bed with him, and he likes you, but he's not, like, fully in love with you. You get murdered. Straight up murdered. This guy is wild. So I just tried to struggle. Get out of there. I wrenched at the tape on my arms painfully and yelled. One arm came free from my panicked struggle. Uh-oh. I looked down to my free arm in a panic. Should I try and replace the tape? Oh, and then he just kills you anyways. Okay, we've been killed like this. It's... We know what's happening. He chops my arms off. How original. Cutting my arms and legs off. Sano already did that shit. Get some original goddamn material. Okay, so he just did his creepy fucking monologue um, at me about death and dying and being scared. And my sanity had dropped all the way down along with his. Because my sanity was lower this time around. And I have a new dialogue option. Because I have. I've been in that river. What? I looked down at my lap. Have I? For some reason, when he said the river, I could picture it. I've been there. A lot. <laughs> I was nearly whispering. What was I talking about? I didn't feel like I was lying. There was no color. There was no edge. No shore. Oh, snap. Oh, but we got death. God dang it, Lawrence. I didn't understand what I was saying, yet I could picture as easily as any clear memory. Was it some sort of dream? I had to convince him I knew. My voice was rising with desperation. It felt like nothing. It was... It was... Like waking up? I looked up at him, finally seeing something completely different. Yes. Like waking up. Like the whole world and the people in it were just some nightmare. That's, that's 
that's what I was talking about. The, the, the special one. The special heart. Like Lawrence had. I know you already know what I was talking about. But that's what I was looking for. Again. I am dead. In this scenario. So I am very confused. <laughs> Shit. I didn't think. Uh, there was anyone else. I looked at him empathetically. You're not alone. Not anymore. I used to regret coming back. I didn't even mean to. I just wanted to stay there. But I accidentally started dreaming again, I guess. Maybe it won't be so bad this time. If you stop murdering people, that'd be great. I... It looked as if a weight had been lifted from his shoulders. Maybe we can have some fun in this world. I'd really like that. I'm sure you would. He grabbed a knife and knelt to cut me free. I stood shakily. I stumbled forward into his arms. We held each other for a long moment. Our hearts were beating, but we both knew the truth. We have each other now. And the whole world dying all around us. You live? You live with that ending? Okay. I mean, you live until like literally 20 minutes later, you're like, yeah, I like this plant, but it's not my favorite. And then he just fucking like, cause you made him slightly annoyed. Okay, so we did scream. And he was not happy. We let him cut and we die. So maybe we try begging? Please. My voice was shaking. Lawrence, I don't want to die. My head dropped as I tried to hold back tears. I don't want this. He grasped my arm tightly. What you want doesn't matter to me. That is pretty obvious. I froze. He pressed the knife through my skin. I jerked and gasped as pain shot up my arm. His grip tightened painfully around my wrist. You chose to feel this, I guess. The rest of my body shook, but he held my arm perfectly still. Yep. Okay, well if I let him cut me, I'm gonna die, so fuck off. No! I pulled my arm away from him and get wrecked. No? He paused. You want to see it happen? See what happened? I'll show you. He held up a small glass bottle. But you have to drink this. I looked at it and gulped. Of course, more drugs. I looked down at my bleeding wrist, already feeling a bit dizzy. Fine. He nodded and held the bottle to my lips. See, that's what he could have done instead of chugging it and <laughs> baby birding it into my mouth. I took a deep breath and drank it. How do you feel? I tried to answer, but I just made a strange gasp. I was losing control of my mouth. My head began to fall forward. I didn't like the way everything was moving around me. Lawrence apparently sensed my distress because he leaned forward to hold me and keep me still. It's okay, I can understand you anyway. I heard a soft, ripping sound as he cut the tape from my arms. He leaned lower to free my legs, and I realized that I couldn't move any part of my body at all. There we go. Something nagging at the back of my mind was telling me that I should be afraid. Instead, I felt comforted and warm as he wrapped his arms around my body to lift me up. Oh no. Everything was moving again. Just for a moment, Cece. Something solid pressed against my back. See? I just began to register that it was the floor touching me when he knelt over me. No more moving after this, don't worry. I felt a rush of relief. He was spreading my arms to the side. You're really pretty, I know. It was kind of hard to keep track of his movements. You're like the last day of summer. I could feel him touching my arms. All of my other senses were blurry, but his touch was clear. 
people aren't just red inside. His voice was even and gentle. Do they all just like share this goddamn poison that paralyzes you but allows you to feel everything? God, like all of them have it. Everybody has it. Everybody just has this. It's silly. There's purples, oranges, yellows, just like leaves. I felt a tiny prick on my arm, then a searing pain. Panic came rushing back to me as I found myself unable to struggle or move away from the slicing. I couldn't even look, but the pain was explosive and overwhelming. What was he doing? I have to be very gentle. Oh no. I watched his concentrating face as he began to pull something from my arm. The way he held it, my fevered mind imagined it was some kind of snake or a string. They lead all over and around and always to your heart. His hands were stained with my blood. He was so calm. It was my vein, wasn't it? Why? Soft red roots. I felt the same pain sear through my other arm. I want to shine light through them. What? It was getting harder to understand him. I'm going to make that moment. Just one moment in time. You'll be so delicate. The room was spinning. Your roots and leaves just starting to decay. His words were blurring together and I thought I could hear wind through trees. Just like the last day of summer. Mm. Uh, I was being a little shit and he started bleeding me out. I guess we can't do this the slow way. He kicked the bucket closer to the chair between my legs. You're just too much of a problem, aren't you? Always. Always. <laughs> a fountain of problems. <laughs> he grabbed the back of the chair and tilted me forward over the bucket. The chair creaked from being only on two legs. I let out a frightened whimper. He flipped the knife in his hand and suddenly slammed it between my ribs. I tried to scream from the pain, but I only made a choked gurgle. He held the chair as I shook and looked up at him in shock. He tore the knife sideways and yanked it out from my flesh. My horrified gaze sank downward, to the slow river of red seeping down my chest between my legs and dripping into the bucket. I finally managed to cough, but it was just more blood. I couldn't work my lungs. Fuzzily, I thought to myself, that's probably for the best. Okay. So, I know that there's an ending with our dear friend, Ren. So I think let's, uh, let's take a little sneaky peek on him, see how he's doing.